Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Recruiting Podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thanks for listening. With me is Shay Dixon, who's fresh off of uh, watching some LSU spring football practice. We'll talk about the Tigers on the practice field more later this week on another edition of our podcast. But we've got a lot to focus to on uh, focus on on the recruiting front as LSU is now welcoming back visitors onto campus with spring break in the rearview mirror. Hope you guys. Uh, enjoyed a little bit of spring break if you had one. LSU did get one. Now they have visitors back on campus and two of the best prospects on their recruiting board in the class of 2024, Shea. And we're jumping right in with these two because they're two targets that are emerging as two keys to this 2024 recruiting class. One being Louisiana tight end, Tradez Green, one of the best tight ends in the nation, a two-sport athlete uh, right up the road from LSU. And then four-star Midlothian, Texas wide receiver, Bryant Wesco. And both have Louisiana ties, obviously, with Tradez Green being an in-state guy. And we'll talk about Bryant's in a bit. But how important is this, Shay, to get Tradez Green on campus if you're LSU? He's somebody that has long been a target, kind of keeps his recruitment relatively close to the vest. But LSU has been a constant in that recruitment for quite some time now. Yeah, I uh, was walking into football ops building today at LSU for practice. Um, or I guess it was right after the media portion of practice, the first 20 minutes. And we were walking in to wait on Brian Kelly for when he talked after practice. And Trey Des Green was walking in. And I think we've got him listed at six five and a half. He is all of six five, uh, And we have met 225. I would bet that's about right. He looks like a college basketball player right now like someone who's already been in a weight room he doesn't look skinny or anything like that and this is obviously look he has college basketball offers we haven't heard anything billy to lead us believe that he's not going to probably play football in college and the on three industry rankings have him as the number two tight end in the country he had a really big year up in st francisville jackson uh playing at east feliciana but they have a guy committed tavion galloway out of the midwest at tight end We know they want to take multiple. They continue to offer tight ends, but do you, do we both have, I know I do. We've got, um, let's see me and Billy's picks. I'm on the on three recruiting prediction machine. I do. Sam does Billy. You could be up next. You can commit right here on the pod to committing to an RPM pick. Mine's in, I think I'm on 65%. That was from in November. I would have that number higher right now. He's just spending a lot of time around LSU because he's close. And he's being recruited by schools all over the country. He can drop into LSU practice on a Tuesday, you know. So I love where they're at. I think they're making him a priority. I know that Mike Denbrock, who coaches tight ends, is prioritizing him. They have a number of other coaches on staff who are working with Green or in terms of getting Green on board. I just feel like they know all the right buttons to push here behind the scenes with Trey Dez, making him a priority. I think at some point he will be part of this class and a big piece to what I consider a growing puzzle in Louisiana as we continue to kind of find out who do they take Billy and, and who do they maybe not, not make a move on in Louisiana or maybe gets out of state. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, you, you mentioned the RPM pick I'll commit to making one uh, as well uh, with trade as green, because you know, we are going to drop our updated class prediction piece this week, both you and I. So Ooh, yes, subscribe to the Bengal tiger, $10 for four months right now is our spring ball special. You get access to, Uh, Obviously, those on three plus type articles, uh, which are class predictions, for example. But also you get the Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat. Check it out on the message board. DM us if you can't find the instructions for how to get your hat. Anyway, it'll be a lot cleaner than Billy's hat right now, too. It comes comes not used. It comes brand new. Welcome to being uh, the sweater of uh, the Bengal Tiger family here. Uh, The trade as green recruitment. I I would have thought that I would have put one in. Uh, for him at some point over the last year or so, especially when Sam dropped his early on in our uh, Bengal Tiger lifespan. But um, he's somebody that has just kept such a lid on his recruitment. He doesn't really do many interviews. So for me, I haven't talked to Trey Dez probably in a while. So that was one thing that certainly I kind of, you know, always want to try to do is talk to these kids at least a little bit before I uh, make a prediction just because you can get a totally different vibe if you if you do talk to him. But, you know, Trey Des Green has shown with his actions that he's, I would say, a pretty heavy LSU lean. Um, I, I like where LSU stands in his recruitment just from, you know, obviously what you hear, what I hear, what Sam hears. 
uh, from behind the scenes on it. Uh, and they've navigated it very well. I mean, he's a young man that probably wants to explore the basketball aspect of it. But in the end, he's going to go somewhere on a football scholarship. And that cuts in to that opportunity to play basketball and play it at a really high level. So he has to make a football decision. And I think that football decision is ultimately going to be, at this point, LSU. Uh, just because of the way they've recruited him, I think the need for tight end, especially a guy of his frame he's somebody that probably needs to develop as a blocker a little bit more they play him out wide a good bit um, in their offense and his at his high school but I, I feel like his frame separates him from what they're recruiting what they have now in this 2023 class that's about to all be on campus by the time the summer rolls around and when he gets to LSU he's going to be somebody that can separate himself uh, with that size that ability to block play out wide play multiple spots as a tight end in a sense. Um, I think LSU's done a terrific job here. So yes, Shay, I will commit to making that prediction as my predictions drop on Wednesday. We have him as the number three, we on three, have him as the number three prospect in Louisiana. You know, it's wild, I guess not wild, but maybe surprising people might not have guessed the on three industry rankings, which is 24 seven ESPN rivals all ranked uh, or all kind of factoring at, at different levels there. Hasman is the number one player in Louisiana. So this is in the eyes of some analysts, the best player Louisiana has to offer. Uh, also behind the scenes, when I texted Billy yesterday about, he was like, hey, Bryant Wesco is going to be at practice. I'll have a story up. I was like, yeah, Trey Des Green will be there. I'll have a story up. It's like, and then I'll get some quotes from him. And Billy just responded, LOL, good luck. <laughs> hey, and it doesn't make him a bad kid at all. He's no, no. Oh, he's not talking to anybody else. He's not talking to anyone. Yeah. When you, when you see Trey Des Green and, so you got to get him in person. Yeah, see, he's awesome in person. And, and Sam, Sam's been out uh, a few times, especially last spring, uh, to see him. And, and we got him uh, after one of his games this fall. Um, so, uh, you know, Peter did with the Bengal Tigers. So he's great when you get him in person. Uh, he's just he, – he has that basketball element of him where he can I'm, really low key. I'm bad on the phone too, though. Like, I'm not going to – you text or call me, there's a low chance that you're getting a response if it doesn't involve work. Or like an immediate family issue. Noted. All those. And all those. We all those don't factor into either of those for trade years. years. Yeah, you get the random uh, either high school coach or seven on seven. Sometimes a prospect uh, who gets your number, and you're like, "Who is texting me right now? Uh, yep. and how did they get my number?" So uh, noted. Uh, PSA for everybody out there, uh, Shay. If he doesn't have your number, good luck. Well, uh, trade as green is one. We're going to see a new RPM pick. Come in for Wednesday morning from yours truly. One that I would love to say I'm going to put one in for Wednesday morning. Uh, a guy about an hour and a half south of where I live is Midlothian, Texas wide receiver Bryant Wesco. Right now sits in position to be a five-star for on three. And I think continues to make the argument that he's going to end up a five-star. We have to see a senior season unfold, but he just dominated the Under Armour Dallas camp this past weekend uh, was named, uh, or two weekends ago now, was named the on three MVP of that camp by Cody Belair. Um, I was there, loved what I saw from Bryant Wesco. He's got Louisiana ties as well. His dad, Bryant Sr., uh, was an All-American at Louisiana Tech. LSU has him on campus as we're recording this podcast. His first glimpse of LSU from the recruiting side of things. He's been there a couple of times before just as a, as a youth. Um, but... Uh, Bryant Wesco is somebody that LSU is turning up the heat on in a big way. Uh, if you were on the site about a year ago, I went out to one of his camps, um, you know, that that he competed at, worked out with trainers at. And I said, this is a guy that don't be surprised if, if LSU makes a move on. And they should. Uh, he was rangy. He was thin, but just bouncy in such an insane way. Uh, he was coming off a year where he'd actually played both ways, um, but went over 1,100 yards as a uh, junior this past year in a triple option op offense. He's just a freaky athlete. And lo and behold, last month, LSU did offer, and now they're getting a visit. I'm going to go deep into why I think that they need to be really after a Bryant Wesco, because think of what you need on a checklist, right, Billy? If you're LSU, receiver, and I've said it a million times, <clears throat> we're so used to they Louisiana gives them guys that even in years like 
that aren't the Jamar Chase or Jefferson and Odell and Jarvis. You've got Russell Gage or you've got DJ Chark who are starting NFL receivers. So Louisiana is always going to give you guys. Well, right now we're 10 months from signing day. Granted, we haven't hit summer camp yet. Uh, we haven't hit senior seasons, but only one receiver in the state has an offer. That's Kobe Young at Holy Cross. He remains uncommitted. They only have one receiver committed and they went to Georgia to get him. I put out my sort of hard feel or kind of rules here that I'd like them to, to abide by. And they don't have to listen to me because they get paid and I don't to do this, but it makes sense. Go into Texas and recruit receivers. Go Florida is the place you can recruit receivers. A lot of schools can go there and you can get great athletes. Um, be in Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama. Don't go all over the country for receivers. Like don't fly over those States to go get other guys and battle other teams for national guys, because the Southeast and more specifically, Louisiana, East Texas, that can give you all you need and more. And they finally offered Bryant Wesco. And look, I get it. He is probably 6'2", and he's a skinny dude. I mean, there's no doubt. He's probably in the 170s, and he'll be naturally probably thin-framed as he goes, but as time, he'll put on more weight. That's not an issue for me because, as you noted, he plays in a flex-bone offense. Their head coach last year said, basically, hey, look, we're, we have this offense, but we got to get Bryant the ball. He's the best player on the team. Well, then he goes for 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns. Couple that with, as you mentioned, his dad. His dad went to Destrehan, played multiple sports. Destrehan high grad. Destrehan's as good as anyone to LSU. Went to La Tech, five-time All-American running track and field, Hall of Famer at La Tech now. They settle at Midlothian. His sister plays college soccer at Oklahoma. They're, in a, they're a team that is in the mix here. Uh, but – I also look at Dallas, Billy, and I'll give you a shout out here. I don't see why now. And for so long, Houston was the hotbed for LSU. And it was because Houston had tons of talent, tons of public schools, different all over the map. And it was a big alumni base. LSU's Dallas alumni base is just about as big or catching up to Houston's right now. And Dallas's football and in the surrounding areas like a Midlothian have prospects like this. So I know Houston's a four-hour shot. Dallas is a little bit longer of a drive. But to me, I'd be active in Dallas. This staff has been, even dating back to the end of the Orgeron era. I think they're continuing to do so more and more. I don't – he stacks up to me. We'll talk about more receivers later in the pod. I know you agree, but this would be someone I'd be as hard after as anyone else out there. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And another reason why, too, is you've got Brian Thomas Jr., who's – now getting older, um, you know, you just signed Shelton Sampson, who's very, very highly touted, but you still need that next up of big body receivers and a guy as bouncy as him. I mean, I think he was well over 47 uh, feet in the triple jump. Um, and, and so just a ridiculous yeah, a big athlete. triple jump guy. Yeah. So ridiculous athlete just overall. Um, he has added so much fluidity to his routes and savviness. He routed up and I w I've been to Under Armour Atlanta, Under Armour Orlando, now Under Armour Dallas. That defensive back group at Under Armour Dallas was probably the best out of those three, and I would be hard-pressed to see the other regions matching it. They had guys left and right that were four stars in both junior and senior classes, and he routed up some guys <laughs> and made some plays over the top that were just unreal. Um, so just from a talent perspective, you should be on them. You mentioned the Dallas thing, Che. Um, our listener base, believe it or not, outside of Baton Rouge, um, and actually it kind of trades trades blows here between Dallas and Baton Rouge is our biggest listener base. So LSU fans are very active in Dallas. I think it's the second largest giving area uh, for LSU alumni right now. So it might not have passed numbers-wise Houston, but uh, in terms of people, but it's a big, big base up here in Dallas. Uh, so LSU is prioritizing them. We saw them get Ryan Yates out of the Dallas area. We saw them get Nuss. Um, they've recruited this area really, really hard. There's a bunch of prospects that they're after in a big way up here in Dallas. Um, Colin Simmons, the five-star. Go ahead and say it. Colin Simmons, five-star. DN. Yep, yep. Colin Simmons, not Colin Hurley. Um, <laughs> he is at Duncanville. They've got a bunch of Duncanville prospects they're after. So that's that South Dallas area. Three of the state championship winning programs at the highest levels of Texas high school football came from that little 15-minute area. You could draw kind of a circle around it. Midlothian's in that area. So the talent level out of there is pretty unbelievable lately. So to get a foothold uh, in an area like that with a prospect who's going to be as highly recruited and already is as Bryant Wesco, he just went to Clemson and added an offer. TCU and Oklahoma have kind of been 
well out in front here just because they've been recruiting him for so long. Texas is trying to get in there. A&M hasn't really been able to get in there much. Um, but this is one that if he does decide before his senior season, LSU is going to have a really big chance here to get him. And it wouldn't shock me if everything goes well on his visit, which usually they do, uh, that they'll get an official and they'll be right in this till the end. Yeah, looks. I mean, I think that would be what people could consider a top three. Oklahoma and TCU have recruited him for a long time, and he's very much showing interest in LSU, visiting. And like you said, I bet it leads to an official. The Louisiana connections are there. Uh, oh, and he is the number six receiver in the country on, on three. So we're talking about a dude who is very, very good at football. Obviously, he should be a take. This would be a good transition, Billy. I, we could name a million names here, but I don't know how you want to organize this. Even if it's not Bryant Wesco or it is, the reality remains they have one wide receiver committed, JoJo Stone. And look, he's not signed. You don't even know if he ends up in the class. And they've only offered one Louisiana receiver. They're not going to be able to lean on just getting you know three or four guys from Louisiana. So maybe they get Kobe Young. We I have a pick in for LSU to get him out of Holy Cross. We'll see. But you've seen a lot of guys visit here recently. They In the month of March, I think half of this list, I sent you more than half of them. Uh, that we've been talking about have already visited. Is there anyone you can point to and be like, I feel pretty good about that guy or that guy? I, I think the one that, and and this doesn't mean that caveat for those listening who are about to you know punch your steering wheel or throw their computer, just because I say one person doesn't mean I don't feel good about LSU's chances for other, but I'm going to circle Jelani Watkins. Um, and LSU does have JoJo Sloan, uh, JoJo Stone, uh, committed. We'll talk about Joe Sloan in a bit. Um, Jojo Stone out of Georgia, who is a slot and a you know thickly built slot, really reliable catching. He was one of the better receivers I saw at Under Armour Atlanta. He's been committed for a long time, and he was just back up on campus uh, earlier this month. He's going to be back again and again. He's going to be hard to flip. We'll see, but there's a lot of schools coming after him. Jelani Watkins is one of the fastest guys in the entire country. I think right now in the, in Texas, he's either, I think he's either top two or top three overall in the hundred meter. Um, so that kind of gives you, and that includes, you know, seniors as well. So that gives you an idea of how fast this guy is. I mean, routinely right around 10, three, 10, four plays in the Houston area. So we talked about Dallas. Now we talked about Houston, a really strong, you know, recruiting base in the past for LSU. They have had him quietly on campus a few times. And I feel like with the staff's overall ties with him, um, I believe he's related to a Monty Watkins, who's a lot of the staff has recruited in the past. Um, for those recruit Knicks out there, um, that's a that's a name from, uh, uh, well, I guess he was a 2023, but um, or he was class 2021. He had ended up at TCU and then transferred to uh, New Mexico State. But um somebody that a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, they're related. This one, LSU is, you know, really, really pushing for in terms of Jelani. Uh, he's a terrific athlete. He's one that I feel really good about. And just because he is so quiet, I mean, you really can't get him on phone or interview him. I'll probably be going down there to see him in spring ball this fall, this, this spring. But um, I think LSU sits in a really good position for him right now. You want to hear a wild thing? I've got his track thing. They just updated again. They ran some more races. Bet it's sick. A, anything under 11 usually is like pretty fast for 100, obviously. He's run a 10 2 1 and a 10 3 5, which is stupid fast, but both of those have wind aided. So fair enough, but still insanely fast. The other day, he ran into a headwind, minus 1.6, a 21 flat 200. True. Anything really under 22 is insane. He's got some 20s in there, too. So May, as you said, may be the fastest, one of the fastest receivers in this class, certainly of guys that are LSU caliber, that level of football caliber as well, um, and have those offers. I'll also mention, which I think is probably a good thing, because we just talked about, uh, I don't know what JoJo Stone's listed at, if you have it off the top of your head, but Bryant West goes 6'2". Um, Jelani Watkins is what, 5'9", 160 pounds, so really more of a gadgety speed slot guy than a pure outside receiver. And you want variety. You want guys. I think they did a really good job this past class of getting a lot of guys who complemented each other. Well, I think getting a Jelani Watkins, there's not a lot like that out there that are, you know, smaller, shiftier and just straight up speed guys. He'd be, he'd be 
the next in line, I guess, behind Aaron Anderson. That would that would kind of be the plan for him, I, I think, in a, in a sense, in a way. Right. Anderson's probably a little bit thicker, better yep. player, obviously, a little bit taller. Yep. But so, speedy, we'll can run. That's the facts. He's got wheels in a big way. So I like where LSU stands there. It, I'll throw it over to you, Shay. You can have the next pick, and I'll, I guess, you know, sound off. It sounds like we're in agreement on Jelani Watkins. Who's one of the next guys on your list? I mean, I think that I think that ultimately they will get Kobe Young uh, when things come down to it. So you could count him into the class. I'd really like, like we said, them things to go in a positive direction with Wesco. Watkins would have been my pick. See, I guess that's why I'm asking is because Colin Hurley's playing with Cam Coleman seven on seven. They've gotten close. Cam Coleman's visited. LSU's going to get an official visit. He told Chad Simmons he wants. He's still going to wait a bit to decide, but. He's also an Alabama top 100 kid. Auburn's all over him. Bama's offered him. So it's tough to like buy into that. And then I think of Aaron Hampton. Well, yeah, he loves LSU. He's a big time player, but he's been committed to a couple schools already. And then like, where does that go? And then I'm looking at others that have visited like Jeremiah McClellan and had been offered um, Draylon Miller, Mario Craver. Uh, I know Bradell Richardson's out there. It's not, I'm not like pressing the panic button because Guys come out of like I didn't think early on like LSU was going to be the team to beat no matter what for a Jalen Brown or someone and then they went in and got it done. But I don't didn't see anyone else. I'm like, oh, dude, I bet that they really lead for that guy. And that's probably okay because we're still in March. I mean, a lot of that kind of begins to shuffle out, uh, as you noted with Wesco, maybe on official visits. If you have if you get some official visits out of these kids, you know, you're going to end up getting a couple going your way. So I'm I don't know what my answer after those guys would be. Yeah, I, and one thing about Wesco is uh, I, I met his mom, who's lovely, uh, at camp. Uh, she was dressed in um, – it was cold out there. And she had a New Orleans Saints blanket uh, covering her up. So um, they, they do have Louisiana ties, and they support a lot. So we'll see. Um, I would obviously love to see Bryant Wesco, um, you know, be a guy that that LSU really puts their foot down and, and, you know, tries to make it really hard for, you know, him to go elsewhere just from a need perspective, from – a you know, just how hard they recruit him, um, all those things. So uh, we'll see how that one goes. Um, Let's give a shout out, shout out to, to the reality that they could also continue to make, they will make more offers. And as you make more offers and get a feel for who you really like, that's when guys could surge for you. We have a guy, hat tip to Charles Power and Cody Belair here, our two rankings guys. They're really high, more than anyone else in the industry, uh, on Ashton Bethel Roman, who's um, over there in Missouri City at Ridgepoint. Uh, but his mom ran track at LSU. His dad played football at LSU. Yes, his dad is Mark Roman. So that could be a kid in Texas who comes in and doesn't have any SEC offers yet, but clearly has a lofty ranking. He had some good production. He's got good track stuff, clear bloodlines, and both his parents played at LSU. So that's one where it's like, okay, if they eventually offer, you probably think you could get him. Yeah, completely agree. And I don't really know what – necessarily else she's waiting on outside of that i do think cortez hankton has done a really nice job recruiting a bunch of guys and having them in a spot where they probably feel like they have a really good fighting chance for a bunch of guys that they really covet i mean i even think you know jj harrell who committed to tennessee and noriel white who committed to arkansas who knows those recruitments might not be done because both of those commitments kind of came out of nowhere in a sense so they'll keep pressing for those guys um I think you hit it on the head, Shay, with an Aaron Hampton. We've seen him visit. We've also seen him schedule a bunch of visits to LSU and then not show up. We've uh, seen him link to Bama. He's been committed to Texas. He's, uh, I think, might still be committed to Texas. Um, he's been kind of all over the place in a sense. So he's kind of a wild one out of the East Texas area. I'll, I'll make note of one, Draylon Miller. This is an LSU a and this one is going to be one of those battles between these two schools that I think whoever gets them is really going to be pounding it, pounding their chest. Uh, he's out of Silsby, so he's not far from LSU. He's also not really far from AM either in that in that sense as well. But this is a guy that's been on campus a few times at LSU. He's been on campus at Texas A&M um, just, I think, two weeks ago. He was at LSU and then at A&M the next day. Those two are really duking it out, and he's backed that up. He's told Chad Simmons that as well. Um, as myself, just coming off of his visits, LSU is trying its hardest to land this guy. He's kind of a jumbo, 
wide receiver, just a thick dude uh, who plays basketball as well. LSU's really turned the heat up there on him. So I'm interested to see how that recruiting battle goes because I know both schools really, really want him. And if you're LSU and you're recruiting all these wide receivers, you want to be right there. You know, you want to be top one, top two, and see where the chips fall. They're after a lot of guys. Um, if they can get some some combo of JoJo Stone, Jelani Watkins, Bryant Wesco, Draylon Miller, and Kobe Young or whoever. Kobe Young, I think you're and, and Ashton Bethel Roman. I mean, I think you're sitting in a really, really good, strong spot at wide receiver. Receivers never one that I worry about. There's so many talented receivers out there that if you're an LSU and you do it right, you're gonna come away with enough talent. Yeah. More fun to just wonder who. Not so much worried about if they can do it or not. Yeah, that's that's the fun thing, I think, uh, especially in this cycle. And I really do think this kind of across the board, in a sense, maybe outside of a running back. Um, and obviously, quarterback's taken care of. But they have this vast group of guys they're recruiting at a lot of different positions. And they're in the mix for a lot of them. So it's going to be really intriguing to see how it goes at wide receiver, especially um, lots of visits to come. I mean, gosh, we're not even into April yet as far as spring ball goes. Um, so a lot of time for guys to pop up on campus and check out LSU. We also, Shay, if you don't have anything else on that, want you to check out Rogue Shop. RogueShop.com, promo code BENGLETIGER gets you 10% off all items at Rogue Shop. Uh, our friends Richard and Shar who run this craft cannabis uh, company, very small business, uh, veteran-owned, husband and wife setup, uh, and they produce just really quality items, CBD, um, just pain creams, um, you know, tinctures, pre-rolls, gummies, all of those things that help you with insomnia. Um, if you, you know, have pain, if you struggle with anxiety, uh, they've been a great partner with us, uh, Shay, and I think they're helping a lot of our uh, subscribers as well through uh, recruiting season too. 100%. I've had a number of people uh, hit me up and say on the DMs or on Twitter and say that they've uh, made orders. I'm trying to, I placed an order the other day and we got it in. Now I'm trying to to give you the rundown on uh, the dog CBD, which has kind of been around for a while now, but uh, they offer it on the website. So it's not just for us, also for the pups. Um, but also they have a cat one, Billy, so you, you can be handled on both ends, but, uh, I'm trying to, let me pull that up. Uh, but I'll let you know how that goes. I've got some old pups around here. While Jay does that, you can get your CBD, THC, edibles, tinctures, smokables, uh, pain creams, topicals, vapes, candles, soaps, even, um, they handle all of those things and they also have a 24 seven chat function. So if you're looking to, you know, get an idea of what maybe you need to best help you, uh, through whatever you're going through that you feel like you want to explore this avenue, um, they'll jump right on the site. I'm sure as Shay is scrolling right now, Richard or Shar has already popped up uh, in their uh, chat function yep. to maybe chat. She's already popped up. Yep. Uh, so, bacon flavored, yeah. bacon flavored dog tinctures. That's what it is. Oh my God. Come in. <laughs> hey, your dog's going to lunge. Says it helps with, uh, says it helps with joint pain, sleep, all that. And that's, that's what they need right now. So. Well, where is, do you already knock Lundy out with that? Because she she is not in the room today with us. So there is a dog. Chewy's right in. There is a oh, dog. Chewy. Black dachshund right here. You can't. She's blending in, but she is. Oh yes, Lundy's asleep. Sound asleep on the floor here. Love it. Love it. So whatever you need, uh, whether it be your dogs, your cats, yourself, uh, your loved ones, check out RogueShop.com. Promo code Bengal Tiger for ten percent off your order. Let us know what you think on the Bengal Tiger message board. And uh, shout out Rogue Shop. They're great friends of the show. Shay, now we jump into uh, the part of the podcast where we talk about who's getting the ball to the wide receivers. And that includes uh, George McIntyre, 2025 four-star quarterback who's going to be back at LSU for yet another visit. He was in town for the LSU-Alabama game this fall. He was in town with a seven-on-seven team earlier this month. Uh, LSU has offered two quarterbacks, I believe. Uh, in the class of 2025, Bryce Underwood, who they hosted, and George McIntyre, who's out of the Nashville area. And now they're getting McIntyre back for yet another visit. This is a big opportunity to make an early move with yet another quarterback that LSU's offered and um, a guy that I, I think when you look at, you know, they've offered two guys, you would love to have either one of them. 
Yeah, so, I mean, they just brought Ricky Collins onto campus as a freshman. They've got Colin Hurley coming to campus next year as a freshman, so you can focus on the guys who are about to be juniors in high school. And Joe Sloan, who coaches quarterbacks, is only offered two guys, Billy, and we've talked about them both uh, a few times on the podcast. Um, Bryce Underwood, we went into um, a longer discussion about a few weeks ago because he visited right to start the month. He's the number one quarterback in the country for that class. He'll battle for maybe even number one overall prospect. Not far behind is George McIntyre, 6'5", 180, coming out of Brentwood Academy in Nashville. Um, multi-sport athlete, but obviously going to play some college quarterback. Uh, number three uh, quarterback in the country. We haven't released our on three rankings yet, so uh, that's the industry ranking from where everybody else has him right now. But uh, certainly he will be one of uh, the top, most recruited, highly recruited uh, quarterbacks out there. So to get him to campus already, they had him at the Bama game, which was huge, he said. I mean, he loved that. Then they had him drop in, like, what, last week, I think it was, for the when the seven-on-seven seven tournament was in town two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, and now he's back this week for an extended visit. They've got uh, some guys like Brett Borderline who's committed, uh, coming in to help, you know, kind of recruit and host him. And they're rolling the dice here, Billy, and I like it because if you've watched all the guys that are out there, if you're Joe Sloan, you've watched them all. I've got my freshman on campus. I've got Garrett Nussmeyer behind Jane Daniels, so I'm already set up for the next you know couple few years if everything goes well for me. I've got Colin Hurley committed, and the transfer portal's out there. If I end up in a spot where things aren't working out, I can go every cycle, go battle for one of the best guys out there. Joe Burrow was a transfer, won a lot of games here. Jaden Daniels, transfer, win, won a lot of games this past season, played very well. If you know that there's a safety net almost for you, and that you've got guys on campus and you've got a 24 commitment, then go pick the two guys you think are the best ones, offer them and go all out for them. And that's what they're doing. And if they don't get either of them, okay, like not a big deal at all. Then you move on to the other guys that you've been recruiting. But I like the strategy of prioritizing these two early on because it is early. I mean, this is kind of when these quarterbacks are starting to get really highly recruited after their sophomore seasons. And certainly McIntyre and Underwood are guys I would be after and kind of doing anything I can to get them in the boat. And to do that, you got to get them on visits. So knocking them both out in the month of March is um, I'd give that an A plus uh, grade in terms of 2025 quarterback recruiting. Yeah. I mean, this is what you want. Uh, you want to start building these early inroads with these guys and then you let the chips fall. And who knows? I mean, both of these guys are going to be you know, very highly recruited and both have taken multiple visits uh, as well to other colleges and, and they're you know being recruited like they are the top quarterbacks in the country. LSU is also doing their due diligence on other players, too, in the 2025 Classic quarterback. You know, Cutter Bowley is a guy that Joe Sloan went and saw in January. He's out of Kentucky. Obviously, uh, Kentucky is really pushing to uh, keep him uh, in the state. They also are recruiting Ryan, Mon Ryan Montgomery, Montgomery out of the Ohio, uh, out of the state of Ohio, who's uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, has a bunch of offers. He's going to visit in June. We just caught up with him on the site if you're interested in that. Uh, LSU hasn't offered yet but they're showing heavy interest. And I think this is a class that we're going to continue to see guys emerge. Of course, uh, that's something that always happens, but so far, Joe Sloan, he was able to settle in, get that 2024 commit and now, you know, really dive into the 2025 class. So I like what he's doing as far as, you know, the methodical approach to it. He doesn't have seven offers out there to 2025 quarterbacks. Like, you know, honestly, I probably thought he might've just because he's had, multiple guys on campus in this class already. He's gone out and seen a bunch of guys who are, you know, at the very least highly rated, but you know, it seems like he really wants that offer to mean something when he gets it. Um, so, you know, kudos to him for how he's handling uh, that quarterback recruiting down the line. Yeah. We'll see how it plays out. Like I said, quarterbacks another where with the, with the transfer portal now and Brian Kelly is clearly not afraid to use it by going at Jane Daniels and then the ability to re recruit high school quarterbacks like they can, you know, or at least get guys on campus and, uh, we'll see. Joe Sloan's only been here a year now, but things are trending in the right direction. That's not a position I'm really worried about in the least bit, especially not in the near future, considered that they've got Jane Daniels and Garrett Nussmeyer both on campus. Um, all right, Billy, before we got out, I uh, want to ask you this because it's been all the rage. They have 11 commits. They have a top 10 class for 2024. Is anyone on the list are you worried about? And when I say worried are – they make another visits, but also maybe leaning towards opening things up or any of that, because I've already said my piece on Xavier Atkins here. So I'll let you handle this one. 
Uh, Xavier Atkins is an LSU commit. He was one of their early LSU commits. He's from Louisiana, but he moved to Houston, and that puts him a little bit closer to A&M. He's made a number of visits there. He'll be back at A&M. LSU fans are looking and saying, Billy Shea, what's going on here? Explain your side. What do you think? Is this enjoying the recruitment, or is this something to worry about? Look, uh, Xavier Atkins is going to be at Texas A&M this coming weekend, uh, March 25th, I guess. That is this coming weekend. Yeah. So he's going to be there. That's a return visit for him. A&M's continue to really push and recruit him hard. I think there is worry, but I also do get the sense that he is somebody that is going to always talk up other schools when he comes off a visit. Like and he doesn't mean anything by it. And he genuinely enjoys going to certain schools. And, you know, he was back at LSU and having a grand old time. It seemed like uh, riding around with Brian Kelly on campus, Jojo Stone was back, Zion Ferguson. So um, he's gotten back to LSU as well. So I think you watch a little bit more closely what he does in April. Does he come back for an extended stay to see more of practice, more of their plan for him? And if not, and he's really spreading his wings and taking a bunch of other visits, which right now he's only taken AM, Arkansas. I think that's kind of it. I'm, one's maybe escaping me. Um, but he's been pretty particular about where he's visited. I think that's a better sign for LSU in terms of holding on to him. He is somebody who is from a small town, Louisiana, originally. He's now in the Houston area for his senior year of, uh, of high school. I, I, I have some worry just because of I know how hard Texas A&M, for example, is pushing, and they're right down the road now from him. But I'm not ready to push the panic button on him. I think one prospect for me that stands out as far as the potential to go elsewhere is Zion Ferguson. Yep. You know, he's somebody that's not shut the door completely. JoJo Stone is giving some indications that he's going to take officials elsewhere, and he's going to do that. But he's been very adamant that, LSU has a really strong bond with me. I'm going to be back there a bunch. So I think that one you feel a little bit better about. Zion Ferguson, for example, if he flipped to Auburn tomorrow, it wouldn't shock me at all. No. Um, and especially the way Auburn's pushing for him. So that's Zion Ferguson is the one where I'm I'm almost planning on him not being in the class. But I know I, he loves LSU too. It's yeah, like, I do. Uh, I do this answer. I do the math to get to my answer here um, by dividing it up by – state and i don't worry about any of the louisiana kids so that's knocked off more than half the list or basically half the list i don't worry about any of the recent commits especially if they're from around here so the devon keys who you know alito kids i'm not worried about any east texas and we've talked about xavier atkins obviously already uh but that could knock out maurice williams and those guys who maurice williams is a great player everyone's going to recruit him but he spent a lot of time on campus he's consistently made visits so you got to hold on to him, but at this point, I'm not worried about it. I just look at out of state, Colin Hurley, Florida. Well, he seems pretty solid as a quarterback. Well, what about a kid from the Midwest, Tavion Galloway in Ohio? Well, he has seemed to be maybe just behind Colin Hurley as the most vocal about being part of LSU's class. That leaves me settled on two Georgia kids, and they're the two Georgia kids you mentioned. And when you're from Georgia, and then you've got the ability to go to so many different colleges in like a day's drive, you know, like. You can pop to the East Coast. You can go down to Florida. You can be in Georgia. You can go over to Alabama. You can come to LSU. You can go up to Tennessee. You can do all these different things that maybe worries me a little bit. Georgia's a heavily recruited state for a reason. And worried in the sense of, look, they're good players. Could they replace them? Of course. But if you're trying to circle guys that, like, I wonder if he'll end up in the class or not, I agree with you. Those are two that I'm watching that they were early commits. You know, do they ultimately stick? We'll see. Yeah. And, and look, I mean, I think now we're in this, we're in the point where there's going to be somebody who commits over the next four months, let's call it. We're in March now. So let's say through, through July, who's going to commit to LSU, who's not going to be an early commit that very well might still flip. That's, that's happened last cycle. We saw it a couple guys, Deron Reed and um, who is my buddy out in uh, California uh, who, uh, you know, uh, ended up at Oregon um da uh, uh, why, why are you blanking dalen austin dalen austin. I, I i one snap and clear to the 2024 class uh shay but yeah. um those guys all committed in the summer especially deron reed in july so we're gonna see guys potentially not end up in the class even if they commit you know in the coming months 
But these guys that commit so early, it's really hard to hang on to them for multiple reasons. You know, there are guys that in the past, we haven't, I don't think we've seen this under Brian Kelly really, but we've seen guys that they commit two years out and they end up just not being guys that probably should go to LSU. And that happens around the country. And, you know, they have an honest conversation for the most part sometimes and they part ways and that happens. But we also see guys that are heavily sought after that you got to battle and battle. And sometimes it's best to be the one doing the flipping. Um, quite honestly, you know, we saw that with Christian Braithwaite and um, a couple of guys last cycle, but um, you know, you know, it's not always easy to play from ahead in recruiting. No, look, Dylan, they got Dylan Carpenter pimped in uh, Braithwaite, a number of kids they flipped uh, last cycle and, Nobody yet, you mentioned the Brian Kelly era and maybe flips, uh, decommits. Uh, nobody in this cycle. And last year, you mentioned Dalen Austin and Darren Reed. Joshua Mickens stayed home to play at Ohio State, but that one was one where he's a Midwest kid. He's by Ohio State. They offered him after he was committed to LSU. That was an offer he had wanted, and it's no different than a Louisiana kid getting an LSU offer after he was already committed to some other SEC school and saying, I'm staying home. It happens quite often, actually. Uh, and the only other was Omar and Miller, a uh, wide receiver out of uh, Vivian, North Cato. Uh, and he was really committed to the old staff and then not committed to the new staff. So you took three on the chin last year, but it is what it is. That happens. They also flip some guys. So uh, nothing yet. We'll monitor it. But as you noted, flips will come, but they'll also get some guys on flips. And it all about, you know, it's a wash. Yep. So be sure to check out how we see the class playing out uh, as I'll drop my predictions on Wednesday. Shea will drop his on Thursday. Our latest round of class predictions will be out on TheBengalTiger.com. Again, sign up. $10 gets you coverage for four months. So all through camp season and everything, it's a good time to jump on the board. Get your free Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat as well. Please continue to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've seen some guys jump on there uh, as spring ball is heated back up. So appreciate all you guys who have done that as well. So for Shea Dixon, I'm Billy Ambody. We will catch you guys next time on another edition of the Bengal Tiger Recruiting Podcast. Have a good rest of your week, everyone. Thanks for listening.